everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to step two in my step by step harmonica course. Today, I'm going to teach you the ins and outs of our diatonic 10 hole harmonica here, how it got its name, the tuning that it uses. We're then going to learn our first scale, and that's the diatonic major scale. And I'll give you a quick tip on how to get those low notes sounding nice and clear and sweet when you're breathing in through the harmonica down low. All right, let's get into it. So this little harmonica here, it's got 10 holes. It's called a diatonic harmonica and it was invented around 1830. There was a few different people involved at that time with the concept of the harmonica in different countries. And uh, there was a bit of competition back then too. But one thing that happened was everyone agreed that the best tuning, the best note layout for this little guy was something called the Richter tuning, which a guy named Richter came up with. He was German. And that tuning was designed for us to play the popular music of that day back then, which went something like this. <laughs> there you go. Now that's using a technique called tongue slapping, where you basically take your tongue on and off the harmonica to give you chords and melody at the same time. And this was what they were after. They were after chords and melody. And in order to do that, they designed the harmonica to be playable in one key and one key only. And that's why you see people with so many different harmonicas, because there's 12 musical keys and this little harmonica was designed to play in one of those keys. So we use the C diatonic harmonica throughout my entire course, and that's the best one to start on. And it plays in the key of C major. You do see some other tunings out there, um, some custom tunings, some minor tunings, country tunings. Don't worry about any of them right now. Not when you're getting started on the harmonica. Make sure you have the standard uh, diatonic harmonica or blues harp. Ten holes, it's a major harmonica. Okay, now let's take a look at what we've got, what notes are there. Basically, anywhere you blow on the harmonica, you're going to get a C chord on this C harmonica. Makes sense? Now, when you draw in down low on the same harmonica, you're going to get a G chord. And those two chords go great together. C and G go great together. Now, if you picked up a different harmonica in a different key, you'd get different chords, but they'd have the same relationship to each other. It's called a one chord and a five chord. And I get more into that further down the course knowing your different chords and intervals and all of that stuff. But right now, all you need to know is you've got two chords on the harmonica and then a scale that starts on the four hole blow called the diatonic major scale. And that's what I'm going to teach you now, the diatonic major scale. All right, let's do that. <laughs> All right, now, our diatonic major scale is the perfect next step for your practice because it is really going to help you with that puckering technique and make sure and test you and just, yeah, make sure you've got it right. Because now we're going to be playing a scale and moving up and down on the harmonica. And if we can play this scale and move up and back on the harmonica, keeping that pucker in place, sounding nice and clear, then you know you've got it right and you're ready for the next step in the course. All right, so here it is. It's pretty simple. I'll show you the start note, the four hole blow. All 
Okay, so that's there for your reference for blow. If you want, you can go to the website which has the notation for the scale. But right now, I'll just show you it anyway. It's pretty easy. We've got a blow and a draw on the four hole, a blow and a draw on the five hole, a blow and a draw on the six hole. Then we draw in on the seven and blow out on the seven. So it switches on that seven hole. And that's because when again they were designing this harp, they wanted to keep that C chord all the way up the harmonica and they needed to do that little adjustment there. Okay, so I'll play the scale for you now and then you have a go. Here we go. Okay, you'll notice that my lips stayed on the harmonica the whole entire time. I'm not readjusting. That's a big beginner's mistake is to take the harp out of your mouth and put it back in from hole to hole. Once you've got that pucker that I keep talking about in place, it stays there and you can just move up and down like a train on a track locked in on that thing. That's what you want to get. So that is your practice for this week. Make sure you can play that scale smooth and clear like that. Once you've got that, then you're ready for the next step. Okay, now to finish off, I'm going to show you just a quick little tip on those low notes, which can be tricky to get sounding good when you are learning your pucker technique. All right, let's do that. Okay, so down low, when we get into the course a little further, we're going to start bending down there. And in order to do that, we need to have really good, clean, clear single notes, as I've said before. And right on this low area here can be a little bit of a stumbling block when you're just getting started because you can be bending accidentally. And you do that by breathing from the back of your throat or being not relaxed and constricting your throat. And you can get some funky sounds like this. That kind of thing. If that's the sound you're getting from the low end on your harmonica, here's a quick tip. Just imagine you're sipping through a straw when you're playing those notes. Of course, I'm talking about breathing in on the harmonica. The blow notes are usually fine. But down there, when we're breathing in, we want to try and imagine we're sipping through a straw and that brings the breath to the front of our mouth and should keep the back of your mouth fairly relaxed. And then you're going to get something that sounds like this, say on the two hole. Now the three hole. And that's what you want. And that is key before you go into bending and go further. It's about control. So if you're not controlled and you're getting it accidentally, you're not going to be able to do what you need to do later on down the track. Okay. Now on the site, I have got uh, jam, jam tracks or example tracks there of what those notes sound like. So you can play and use it as reference. Or you can just go back and repeat the video and get it off here. All right, so that's it for this lesson, guys. That's a good, again, at least 10 to 15 minutes practice a day. And then I'd say in a week, maybe two, depends on your practice schedule. There's a certain amount of hours you got to do. More practice every day, you'll get there quicker. But whenever you're ready, I'll see you in the next step, step three. Okay, guys, till then.